Audrey, thanks for tuning in for another episode of Math with Mullins. Today we're going to be looking at lesson 9.4, the tangent ratio. So we're going to be able to use it and then solve real life problems involving the tangent ratio. So the first thing we want to know is a trigonomic ratio, and that is a ratio of the two lengths, or the lengths of the two sides in a right triangle. Um, today we're just going to be talking about the tangent ratio, but we'll be able to see um, sine, cosine, and tangent. And a lot of you may already have heard um, about this saying is sine is so, so O over H, which is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is ka, C, um, A over H, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then tangent is toa, which is O, A, or the opposite over adjacent, okay? So that's kind of where this is coming into play. The tangent ratio is our only focus today, and that's a trigonomic ratio for acute angles that involves the lengths of the legs of a right triangle. So when we talk about tangent being opposite and adjacent, we're not involving the hypotenuse at all. The hypotenuse will only be involved with the sine and the cosine. So here's a picture of what that tangent ratio could look like. We can say, for instance, that ABC is a right triangle. This only works for right triangles, by the way and the acute angle A is our focus. When we're talking about that, the tangent of angle A, written as tan A, is defined as the, fol defined as the following. You're gonna look at angle A, which is here, and you would find the opposite leg over the adjacent leg, okay? So opposite leg in this case is BC, which is that green side. Adjacent leg is AC, which is the red side, which is why we are able to remember tangent as opposite over adjacent, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the tangent of J and K for each of these. So we always wanna start by labeling it, our answer like this, tangent of J and then tangent of K, okay? Um, <clears throat> our main goal is to simplify the ratio and get it in a simplified fraction form then we'll start talking about what does it look like as a decimal, okay? So the tangent of J means I want to do opposite over adjacent. So opposite is 24 and adjacent is 32. So 24 over 32 has eight in common. So I'm just gonna reduce both by eight and I'm gonna get three over four. Then I find the tangent of K. So I'm gonna erase what I got for J just so I don't uh, confuse myself. K is opposite over adjacent, so that'd be opposite is 32. Adjacent next to K is 24, and then this one will just reduce to 4 thirds, or 4 to 3. On the next one, maybe you can try this. Go ahead and pause the video here. See what you can come out, come out with for the tangent of J and the tangent of K. Click play when you're ready to check. So tangent of J, here's my J. Opposite is 8, and adjacent is 15 can't simplify that anymore, so we can keep it as 8 over 15. And then the tangent of k, here is k. Opposite of k is 15, adjacent is 8. So j and k are those two acute angles, and they're just going to show um, the inverses or the reciprocals of one another. Some of you might have a teacher that wants you to find the decimal versions of these, so that's when you would just type in, like for instance, 15 to 8 is 15 divided by 8. And that's going to give you a decimal, 1.875. A lot of the times they want you to go to the fourth decimal place. Um, so if that's necessary, you can just round or give it a zero. So the next thing we're going to do is talk about um, what happens when I'm given the degree measurement and I'm missing one of those. So thinking about this, we're still using tangent, which is opposite over adjacent. So that means the tangent of 32 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is 11 over x, okay? So what we want to be able to do here is to first try to solve for x. One of those ways I wanna do that, and there's lots of different ways. I'm gonna multiply both sides by x so I can bring x to the top. So now I'm gonna have x times the tangent of 32 degrees is equal to 
x divided by x just cancels out, so that's 11. Then to solve for x, I'm going to divide both sides by the tangent of 32 degrees. Okay. When I do this, I'm going to take that and round it, um, and then also fill in a few things with a calculator. Okay. So, here, to find out what x is equal to, I'm just dividing by tangent of 32 degrees. Um, And that's going to give me about 17.6. So 11 divided by tangent 32 is about 17.6. Okay, You're going to want to use a scientific calculator for these. Your teacher should have some. If not, you can Google Desmo scientific calculator. That works as well. Okay. The next one I have is um, looking for x here. Again, I can still use my in my understanding of tangent, I have the tangent of 61 degrees, and I want to be able to find that by doing opposite over adjacent, so that's 22 over x. Okay, Again, I'm going to multiply both sides by x, so I can bring x to the top on this left side, so this will be x times the tangent of 61 degrees is equal to 22. Then I'm going to divide both sides by tangent of 61 degrees to figure out what my x is equal to. And that'll give me about 12.2. Okay, one more. Maybe pause and try this one on your own. See if you can work that out with your scientific calculator. And when you're ready, click play. So I'm given my tangent of 56 degrees. And that is opposite over adjacent. So x over 13. In this case, I'm just multiplying both sides by 13 to get x by itself. These 13s will cancel, so x is equal to whatever 13 times the tangent of 56 degrees is. Okay, and that calculation would be about 19.3. Okay, and again, I'm rounding these to the nearest tenth. Next up, we're going to use a special right triangle to find the tangent of a 60 degree angle. So if it's a right triangle, then that means 60 degrees would be one, 30 degrees would be the other, right? Okay. If I want to know the tangent of a 60 degree angle, I also need to remember what is my rule for 30, 60, 90. Um, for the 30, 60, 90 theorem, I have my hypotenuse is twice as long as my shorter leg. And my longer leg is my shorter leg times the square root of 3. Okay, So for my tangent of 60, the opposite over adjacent would be x square root 3 over adjacent x. Okay, In this case, if you look at, I can simplify x divided by x. So that's just going to be the square root of 3 to find my answer. And then in my calculator, that rounds to about 1.7321, okay? Um, if you want to, you can replace x with the number 1 to make things easier. That way you're giving x at least a number and that can help you a little bit better okay we're going to do that same thing here but now we've got a 30 degree angle so still the 30 60 90 but now we're focusing on that tangent of 30. again my 30 degree angle is what i want to focus on so the tangent of 30 degree angle okay um, and what i'm going to do is instead of using x like I did here, 
I'm going to use the number 1. So this would be 1x for the longer or the shorter leg. This would be 1x times square root 3 for a longer leg. And then this one would be 2 times the leg or just 2. Okay. So the tangent of 30 degrees can be opposite, which is the number 1, over adjacent, which is square root 3. And then to find what this answer is, I need to get rid of that radical on the bottom. So I'm going to buy, divide, or multiply both bottom and top by square root 3. So that's going to end up being square root 3 on the top over 3. And then I'll just calculate that in my calculator. I'm going to get 0 0.5773. Okay. Last little bit of our notes is called angle of elevation. Still going to use tangent information here, except take it one step further. So it says the angle that an upward line of sight makes with the horizontal line is called an angle of elevation. Okay, so this is going to come into play whenever we're trying to find the length of something. You are measuring the height of a lamppost. So I'm going to draw a lamppost. Here it is. Hey, there's my lamp, shining bright. Okay, you stand 40 inches from the base of the lamppost. So here I am standing, and I am 40 inches away from it. Okay, you measure the angle of elevation from the ground, where I'm standing, to the top of the lamppost, and that is 70 degrees. Find the height h of the lamppost to the nearest inch. So, this is still setting up as tangent ratio of opposite to adjacent. So, I'm going to find use the tangent of 70 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is the letter H for height, over 40. Okay? So in order to find the height, I'm going to multiply both sides by 40 so that H is all by itself. So, what I'm doing is taking 40 and timesing it by the tangent of 70 degrees. Okay, that'll give me my letter H. So, I take 40, or even, you can even, if you have a, an Apple phone, um, iPhone, take the, type in your 70, click tangent, that's like 2.7474, and then times by 40, you'll get your number of 109.89 inches, but it says round to the nearest inch, so we're just going to round up and say it's about 110 inches, okay? So again, how I'm typing this in my calculator is I type 70, then the button for tangent, and then times 40 to get this. Last up, see if you can try this one. You are measuring the height of a tree. Cool, let's draw a tree. We. You stand 40 feet from the base of the tree. If you want to stop the video here, try this one on your own and then click play to check your work, that'd be a good idea. Otherwise, you can keep watching with me. The angle of elevation to the top of the tree is 65 degrees. Find the h height of the tree to the nearest foot. So, again, this is tangent of 65 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent, multiplying both sides by 40. So that these 40s cancel out. So h is equal to whatever 40 times the tangent of 65 degrees is. So I take 65, find the tangent of that is 2.144, and then times by 40, I am getting 85.78. So I'm going to round that to the nearest foot, and we'll say 86 feet. Okay, that'll be all for today. Um, I think the hang-up was just make sure you have a calculator that can calculate tangent for you. And if not, there's plenty of online options. Maybe ask your teacher what they think is best. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope this helped you. Give it a thumbs up if it did, and we will catch you next time. Have a great day.